Why should you swear I am forsworn, since thine I vow to be? Lady, it is already morn, and twas last night I swore to thee that fond impossibility. Have I not loved thee much and long, a tedious twelve hours' space? I must all of a beauty's wrong, and rob thee of a new embrace. Could I still dote upon thy face? Not but all joy in thy brown hair by others may be found, but I must search the black and fair, like skilful mineralists that sound for treasure in unploughed up ground. Then if, when I have loved my round, thou prost the pleasant she, with spoils of meaner beauties crowned I laden will return to thee, even sated with variety. The Scrutiny, written by Richard Lovelace, narrated by Jordan Harling. Lovelace was a 17th century poet. In the years around the English Civil War, 1642 to 1651, seduction lyrics and poems in favour of sexual freedom were increasingly popular. The theme is as much political as sexual. Lovelace is a cavalier poet. Cavalier poets were supporters of King Charles I in the Civil War. They opposed the type of puritism embodied by their opponents, the parliamentarians or roundheads. So in this poem, Lovelace presents himself as a charmer, a supporter of sexual liberty and the pursuit of pleasure, as appropriate to a cavalier. The rhyme scheme is regular, adding to the impression of a light-hearted song, and also reflecting the even level tone of the dispassionate lover. Most, but not all lines are written in iambic tetrameter, symbolising the persona's inability to commit. The poem is a monologue. We do not hear the woman's voice, only the male speaker's. AO3. Remember that the intended audience of this poem was other male, male members of the court. In Lovelace's time, this poem was, would be set to music, performed and received as a song. It was not intended to be read. Although the question is rhetorical, the reader may assume that the speaker is midway through an argument, so it sets a haughty tone from the start, because the question is unanswerable. Lovelace forces the female into a passive position by creating a dramatic monologue structure. Because Lovelace has written the poem in the style of a dramatic monologue, this gives the impression that the speaker doesn't care what her reply is. His opinion is the only one heard by the readers. The addressing of Lady is not accompanied by any adjective to set her apart from others, which perhaps suggests that he sees women as all the same but attempts to show them respect by giving her a valued title. Impossibility implies genuine inability to be monogamous. The alliteration in the line, a tedious 12 hours space, reflects the persona's boredom of the situation he is in. So we can use this as an AO1 point. Time is an enemy. The use of beauties reinforces the objectification and commodification of women in this era, as well as revealing the narrator's priorities when it comes to women. The auxiliary verb must further emphasises this. Referring to her in terms of her brown hair, and other women even more concisely as black and fair, is use of synecdoche. Just as the woman has no name, but is simply lady, in this stanza, they are only entities in terms of their hair colouring. Must suggest he feels compelled to look for other girls. The imagery of ploughing is phallic. It may represent the taking of virginity. The treasure, indicating how precious he believes virgins to be. This image can also link to pastoral poetry, in which the, th the female body is a landscape to be enjoyed. Round suggests that it's a roundabout course, a bit like a grand tour, such as the one that young men took around Europe as a rite of passage. The language of battle is used here. Spoils, crowned and laden. Positioning the speaker as a victor and women as conquest. Promiscuity is here presented as an acceptable form of male leisure. His justification is that it is his duty to satisfy other beauties and that having taken his sex tour, he will be able to reject the inferior charms of other women and return into the one he is addressing now. This is pure sophistry, a deliberately playful and spur spurious argument meant to amuse and shock.